lot of a, they, a lot of team a lot of stakeholders are banking on you and you will be measured based on performance and growth of the organization you are directly impacting the profit and revenue of that organization the next thing is uh, you would negotiation negotiation is an important skill when it comes to handling cross functional teams handling uh, your premium customers handling even premium uh, premier uh, customer escalation that's like a war room you need to be uh, like cool and calm during such times when you know that let's say a ceo of a top fortune 500 company is coming at you and he is saying that why your organization is not able to deliver so and you can't make any false promises so you need to make sure that you deliver to your top customers and the world is driven through innovation in without innovation any organization can't sustain and as well when you are innovating you need to make sure that you have profitability and you need to manage your risk as well as well like uh, when you are working in an organization maybe you are working on something that is of today but you need to see what's going to come in future uh, the whole market it is driven by disruption in different global market shifts every every now and then you would see that there will be a paradigm shift ha happening so now it could be cloud computing uh, in future it could be a virtual reality internet of things it could be various uh, uh, i would say domains that will come so what you need to do you need to uh, make sure that this disruption i am using the digital disruption well, because i deal with it from next uh, is there a question from anyone uh, that I can address, like, or is just a background noise? Okay, I'll move forward. So, uh, any any disruption? Disruption means a positive change through an innovative idea that you convert into a competitive advantage for your organization. Uh, this are uh, I have listed few essential essential skills for the next generation leaders. I think uh, you might have studied. Uh, in your courses, you might have a lot of uh, uh, what I would say use cases or uh, uh, your in your projects. But I think this is happening in the real world, where your uh, sometimes your stakeholders are C level uh, of your customers. When I say C level, it could be CEOs, it could be CFOs, it could be CTOs of organization. So there is there is a lot of you. Uh, which needs to present in in the stakeholder management, and uh, as we say, everything happens for customer. So customer is the custom. Uh, all our processes needs to be customer centric, and customers will customers will be looking at total cost of ownership. So I think you need to learn all this really well. How to deal with customers? How to develop these skills with, within yourself? Then uh, I would touch some a few of these points uh, in the next slides as well. But for example, uh, what's your go-to market strategy? That is very important because you want to position yourself in the right quadrant. You you need that will enable you to capture the market share. Okay, so this is this is very I would say uh, this is this one slide I want you to really understand uh, because uh, we need to embrace globalization in this world. Okay, so. For example, if I take my example, uh, I have customers in 187 countries. I have partners in partners in 150 companies, uh, 150 countries. So when I say partners, is it means that the organization that we partner uh, and collaborate uh, to sell our product or to sell our cloud platforms and services. We have development centers in 25 countries. We have data centers in 22 countries. So you can imagine that everything is happening on a global scale. So now as the future leaders, what we need to op operate is and learn is how do you handle within within India or within the region? How do you handle the the domestic market? And when we say domestic market, it means within within a particular uh, region or a country. Then how do you develop global and transnational strategies? Uh, how do you enter into strategies and how do you make alliances? When I was saying alliances, it means what are your what are your partners, what are your vendors, and uh, about marketing. So gone are those days when your marketing strategy is just located or localized to a particular region. 
So as as you might, uh, all of you might be using uh, either hardware, software, or any applications which are global in nature. It's not it's not local to your your own country. And when, uh, for example, it could be Amazon, it could be uh, any of the social uh, media platform that you are using, could be FMCG products, uh, uh, global operations management. So when we say operations, you can imagine like. Uh, I was talking to one of the world's uh, second FMCG company, and they say that okay, we handle twenty thousand products, and these twenty thousand products come from fifty different countries with a lot of uh, like uh, uh, forex fluctuations. So that hurts their operations management. So imagine that why the uh, see I don't come from a FMCG background, so I want to stress upon this that your customer will come you with a business proposition. And you need to convert this business proposition into a deliver, deliverable product. That is very important. So uh, I'm sure du uh, during the course, during the pedagogy of uh, learning through your lectures, learning through your peer group, you might have understood how to handle how to handle this. And this is what you will prepare yourself for. And uh, then intercultural management. So like as I as I told you, I have teams across different geographies. They Almost like if I if I keep my laptop open, I'll keep getting mails the whole day and night every like for 24 by 7, 365 days. So I need to un why this is happening is because we have development centers, customers in every different location. So how do we handle uh, the multiculture part? And we should be like inclusive towards them. We should be embracing this. And then international financial management and reporting standard. These are very, very important. Uh, these days, as you would see, compliance compliance to uh, like any any the, like laws in the world is very, very important. Uh, if there is any question, I would really like to take any question or uh, before that, before I move to the next slide. Yes, dear students, if you have any question, you can ask now. Okay, uh, if there is no question, I can move to the next slide. And this slide is like very close to my heart because this is this is what we are seeing from last two years. This has affected all our life, uh, not not in a good way, but we want to really come out of it. And uh, this this is this is something you would understand that what the work that you are doing, how it is uh, helping and changing human life for better. Okay, so. Before I go there, right, I want to uh, make you understand that, for example, if I'm working on an enterprise product, this particular product is not just used by one particular type of customers. It is used by banking industries, finance, stock market, social media, FMCG, various defense, government organizations across the world, uh, automobile, and the list goes on. So you, you can imagine that if the customers are so diverse, then so would be their use cases as well. Uh, so this example I'm taking because yesterday I was just thinking, how do I reach out to all the students to make you understand that it's not just business. It's not just management. You're touching human lives. You're changing the planet. So uh, cloud is, as you all know, cloud computing, cloud services, they're now ubiquitous in entire computing. Let's take modern as an example. Like uh, I hope all of you here uh, you're familiar with a company by name Moderna, which developed the vaccine in US. Uh, if anyone is yeah. not, please let me know. Okay, so uh, I'm sure that a lot of us might have heard Pfizer before the start of pandemic, but a lot of us did not hear about Moderna before the start of pandemic. So how do you think that uh, Moderna, which is really a small organization as compared to the big pharmaceutical giants was able to deliver vaccine so quickly and so rapidly? It was, it was, in fact, they delivered their first clinical batch for phase one trial. As you know, like vaccine goes through multiple uh, trials, multiple phases of trials. I'm not an area expert in that, but what we have read that uh, like pandemic Taught a lot, uh, taught us a lot in this vaccines uh, since last two years. So they had the first phase one trial within 42 days after the initial sequencing of virus. So you can imagine that 
if this would have been so easy there are like thousands thousands of companies thousands of governments who wanted to do this so how do you, how do you think that a small organization were able to do that so they were well ahead in anticipating what kind of technologies they need to use i'm sure that they have put a lot of effort in like uh, microbiology and basically understanding about viruses and others i'm not going to uh, touch that part because i'm not an area expert there but what i understand right modern they, they invented their own cloud based technologies and this this enabled them to create mrna constructs that cells recognize if it is produced within the body this was this was a ground breaking innovation so what we have to learn out of this is the world is going to change there was a business opportunity that moderna tried to capitalize on and they need, they were well ahead in the market and in the competition see this is a competitive market you have to understand one very important thing how do you deal with competition every single day and something will, so this was unprecedented typically vaccine manufacturing take 10 to 15 years uh, for the entire phase of trials and everything to happen so moderna used that solution uh, apart from their like i would say ground breaking innovation in the mrna and cell based discoveries so after that they were able to achieve higher higher efficiency and visibility across manufacturing inventory management which is very critical for rapid scale of vaccine production not only we wanted a vaccine which is like uh, which is will be able to handle but as well the vaccine production because the entire world needed it at some point now now we may not be able to appreciate because all of us are getting vaccines but if you just just go past in your memory maybe a one 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 and a half year back it was just like just give us me give me a vaccine and i'll be like uh, i'll live otherwise i may not live and sustain so now you can imagine like why i'm taking this modern as an example is and making a cloud connection is because as future leaders in this industry and corporate world not just in it could be anything you need to understand few basic facts one is what your speed to market okay so basically if moderna would have released this after 2 years maybe by then at least in the world 10 15 organizations have pharmaceutical companies have already reached there how do you reduce your cost because you can imagine you have put billions of dollars in your investment and research but can you really charge let's say like uh, maybe 5 lakh rupees for a vaccine may not be right if you do that how many people will be able to afford the vaccine and then flexibility of of your operations you can imagine that within no time they need to reach out to every government in this world basically all the countries so and as well your business resilience as well so when we say business resilience is how do you protect your business across so many uncertainties maybe they put their money but if fda fda is the approving authority for vaccines in us if they did not approve it so you need to have a solid business plan and at last but not the least is innovation capability if moderna did not have innovation capability they would not be a successful organization and uh, other thing is how do you embrace how do you embrace new product so one thing you should always understand that the first move there is a lot of first mover advantage how do you how do you accept new technologies in the market so what i would say being coming from the same field of cloud so cloud technology it will allow startups and mid sized companies to accept to, to access the capabilities that were only available to the largest pharmaceutical or only the i would say the top 10 or 100 companies in the world but cloud is making sure that even like you might have known a small small apps on your phone which are probably not so big organizations but they have the compute algorithms power network everything and now they are able to partner in an ecosystem with larger firms so this becomes a level playing ground for everyone so that's that's just what is cloud computing and how does it changes human life so so one point i want to highlight that see for example if i want to relate as a cloud professional i would say this is how this is how the work i am doing is providing a uh, service to the world okay not just not just getting revenues but you have to make an impact okay uh, uh again coming to the cloud services so uh first of all uh, when let's say when you are out of uh, your college and you are trying to find job 
try try to look out for jobs which are in the domain which which is there is a huge uh, expected growth cloud services for uh, so basically i want to highlight this cloud services is not just for it professional cloud services is for everything you would need cloud so you go to a hospital you are scanning your any it scan or anything any x rays or anything it's going to upload a cloud if you use any application you are using twitter you are using facebook instagram any application that you are using is hosted on hosted on cloud and more and more you would see that when you are proposing a solution okay even if you are from if you are coming from a marketing background or a sales background let's say you want to give a solution let's say for example here uh, let's say analytics so analytics means that you want to have what i should recommend it, recommend as a sales scenario okay what what if i reduce the price of the product by let's say 1 dollar is how much revenue i am going to get because of uh, like uh, economies of scale so uh, this is cloud is not just essential to the it uh, but it is essential to everyone because cloud is getting uh, analogous to internet you can imagine like maybe 25 years back uh, like the entire world might have thought okay maybe the internet is only useful for the it it guys but now you can say uh, internet has propagated to every home every uh, person even uh, our kids everyone they use internet so similarly cloud you would see that it will propagate to everywhere you use netflix you use prime everywhere it is it's on cloud so when you are making giving a solution uh, you need to you need to factor that and it's a huge business opportunity uh, year on year on year growth is at least 30% and growing there so uh, as you can see i want to just highlight what's the impact on business so finally when when you are corporate professionals if you say okay i propose a product which is good there are 10 features and everything but the the key thing that you want to sell is what's the impact on business and that's your stakeholder want to hear they don't see they want to hear the 10 features which are cool maybe nice to hear but as well how much will be the profit how much would be the year on year growth and what's see your competitive advantage if you can't convince that you can't convince about uh, having or inventing a new product so cloud enab enables you and uh, the enterprises especially uh, the startups is there any question okay uh, i'll continue if there is yes sir okay okay so uh, as i was saying cloud enables the enterprises even startups and small and mid medium size organizations to access uh, like high tech software that was not available because for having a earlier the model was the larger corporations they used to have their data centers and building a data center is an extremely expensive affair it's like a data center cost somewhere between the minimum the the low cost data center itself will call 1 billion dollar and it can go as well to 5 to 10 billion dollar so no, like or maybe fortune 100 500 companies can afford that but how do you think that startups and mid size companies if you want just let's say uh, five five servers or maybe uh, maybe four, four terabytes of data that kind of uh, that kind of opportunity was not there okay so now organizations they are embracing this dynamic process the cloud based operating models in which they are it is based on uh, like pay as you go pricing you are not charged for a like a yearly basis the way you consume it you are billed accordingly and this has increased the competitiveness uh, especially in today's uh, environment that now uh, earlier the case was if you want to procure an expensive piece of hardware let's say if you want to procure a super computer so uh, it will take 90 days to procure a, a super computer and doing the setup and everything so basically you will be functional on the at least 100 days it will be it will require but now it's just on a click of your button so you can imagine that 100 days you already zoomed in into future so that's that's the power of cloud okay uh other thing uh i don't know whether some of you heard this term or not data is the new oil this term was initially uh, coined by someone by name clive humby and it was repeatedly being uh, 
posted in uh, various uh, magazines like Forbes, uh, Economist, and others. What does it mean that that every decision decision in today's world is made based on data, a data which is which is not stale in nature, a data which is ingested in real time. So now, when we say data is the new oil, right? Because uh, all the decision making, the business intelligence, everything happens based on real time data, and you can imagine that. Uh, let's say there is a meeting of high profile uh, CXOs, basically CTOs, CEOs. So what if they want to make a, uh, or if the board want to make a decision, which is, which happens in a collaborative way, the first thing they'll ask, do we have backing data for this? Do we have supporting data for this? Otherwise, you can't make strategic decisions just based on your own inputs or recommendations. It needs to be backed by data. Then the next thing is once you have the data, you try to run analytics on the data. And the an analytics means what if type of scenarios? What if I increase this uh, margin of my product by this amount? What if I do this? What if I stop selling somewhere? What if I uh, in, in expand my, let's say, production capacity? So all these type of decisions, you can make data-driven through analytics. So uh, all these terms, I would say, these are not just for IT professional. Analytics is something even Healthcare, healthcare professionals, they do it. I'm sure that I was giving that modern example without, it's a pure data driven. For example, if someone would have told you, okay, there is a very good vaccine, uh, take it. You might not have taken. So one time we understood is efficacy of the vaccine. That what's the efficacy of the vaccine, which is a pure number. If the vaccine efficacy is say 80%, I'm just taking a ballpark number, you would say, okay, it is good. But if someone would have told you, okay, it's just 10, 20%, immediately the credibility of the product goes on a task. So that's the example of how data-driven decisions we also take in our daily life. So now the, the other thing is bridging across generations, geographies, and functions. So that is very important that one thing, like I, I did my, uh, when I was doing my MBA in IIM Bangalore, one thing that I understood is that every, every one of us might have done our earlier, uh, like uh, graduation, maybe in a particular field, but during this course, what we understood, how do we stitch all them together, whether it is HR, finance, accounting, corporate finance, strategy, uh, sales, marketing. So now you can imagine all these functions you're taught, and this you can use real time. For example, if I'm coming for IT background, but still I manage budget for my organization. If I don't un have understanding of finance, I can't manage a or organization. Then you need to manage You'd have your employees who employees who are reporting to you. You have your customers who are banking on you. You have your partners that you would deal with every day and the stakeholders. So imagine that a lot on it resides on you. How do you deal with them every day? And as you might have seen, everything is digitized these days. So that's the digital transformation. Hardly you would see paperwork. So I didn't I didn't see uh, much of paperwork these days happening anywhere. And wherever we see paperwork these days, even if it's going to transform, even it's going to transform. So, uh, and this digital transformation is not just that, okay, it moves from like paper format to uh, uh, let's say digital format. It, it, there's a lot of things happens in background, like with respect to having ERP software or like strategic, strategy software or accounting software. A lot of things get digitized. And uh, for people who don't understand, like uh, like still not able to appreciate what is digital transformation, right? Let's say, just to give an example, uh, all of us have used, let's say, credit cards or debit cards not far long ago. We used to use every single day, all transactions used to happen through debit cards and credit cards. And Visa and MasterCard were third, and maybe Amex, third one. They were the de facto leaders there. Uh, India introduced all of you would know UPI. We all use like Paytm. We all use Google Pen. Everything that transformed everything. That's what I'm saying about digital transformation. We have collectively Visa and Mastercard together did not have 100 billion plus transactions in India, but just UPI had that many transactions. It has it has just raised to every single corner. Like even in my daily life, it is touching. Like if I want to pay, even just maybe a minimal amount of let's say 50 or 100. I would not hesitate and just use uh, any UPI app. That 
practice what I'm saying to make decisions which are digital in nature. And other thing, and this is the last point, but uh, I, want, I intentionally kept it as last point is, how do you understand your customer? That is, that is the crux of you being a successful leader is, you may build, build, uh, build a brilliant product, okay? But do you have understanding of who is your customer? Do you understanding of what is your customer's expectation? Did you build a good relationship with your customer? A lot of things are based on that. For example, maybe if we buy a product and uh, maybe the after sale service of the product is really pathetic, uh, then I'm sure people in the market, they would soon realize it and the product sales are going to go down. So this is very essential in today's world and always that building the relationship with customers. The earlier we might be, it might be happening over phone, or it might be happening over mails, but now it doesn't happen. There are a lot of data-driven tools that will help to capture the customer's uh, sentiments even before you're rolling out a product in the market. So with that, uh, I would like to uh, uh, conclude my part. And uh, I, I'm extremely sorry I had a uh, medical emergency, so I would I need to leave early. But I would be happy uh, to talk to the students. I have kept some time in, in buffer to talk to the students and answer any questions uh, you're having. Yes, dear students, if you have any questions, we will summarize at the earliest. So anyone have any question related to the presentation, sir, have already made? So, sir, I have one question. Yes. Uh, so, uh, as, yes, Nidhi, yes. Do you have any question? Yes, Nidhi, yes. Good afternoon, sir. This is Nidhi Jaiswal, and I am from Kolkata. Hi. So, hello, sir. So, I would like to, uh, like, we have uh, known a lot about you and all your experiences. So, I would just like to know, sir, that what do you feel is the need of the hour for IT industry as IT is at its boom? It's emerging, like, everywhere. And what, like work from home, if you are dealing with that, it's like almost a part of team. So how do you think it's going to be? And what are the uh, need of the students? Like what are the qualities for the IT, the students that will be taking IT as a professional background? I think uh, one uh, one thing that we need to understand uh, and is embrace the change, embrace the environment. Uh, uh, like as we all know, uh, change is the only constant thing. So what we have done, like as an IT professional, right? This was very new environment to us as well, like uh, working from environment, uh, working from home environment, and uh, like uh, handling across geographies. So you can imagine not only just in India, but now I have team spread across the across the geographies, and a lot of team members might be impacted due to various reasons. So I think it was uh, what I would say, right? The most important thing uh, as a professional should be how do you take decisions uh, which are decisive at the right moment. It is very, very essential skill, not just as an IT professional, but even as a management professional, it's very important that you make the right decisions, not just by uh, your own like uh, inputs or your own wisdom. You need to factor in a lot of uh, data and take a collaborative approach. So that's what I would say in the need of the hour. And I, in, if you ask specifically in IT, what I would say, right, the way IT uh, works is you need to work and anticipate what is the need of future, not today. So for example, uh, what I am currently working on is something that will be needed in the market after three to five years. So we have that kind of vision, which is planned well within us so that I will be really able to release that product within one year by that time, even customer will not know even I we need it. Okay. For example, when Facebook came, we didn't know that we need Facebook or Output or Instagram. So a lot of things, whether we need it or not needed, but this is something that the whole ecosystem is changing, and we need to develop such platforms in for the future needs. I hope that answers your yes. question. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for guiding us for the correct way. Thank you. My pleasure. Yes, Diksha. Good afternoon, sir. 
आई एम दीक्षा गायकवाड़ फ्रॉम सिंगरौली मध्य प्रदेश सर बेसिकली जस्ट अ स्मॉल क्वेश्चन दैट हाउ फाइनेंस कैन अ फाइनेंस स्टूडेंट कैन बूम अ फ्यूचर इन आई सेक्टर what would be the key points for the finance student uh, should be taken care of in the it sector i think uh, i real first of all i really appreciate finance as a field though i don't come from that field but what i have learned during my course was if you don't understand where the money comes where the money goes you can't make any right decision okay so uh, with respect to let's say finance uh, if you are a finance uh, professional right for example i was saying about the cloud based model Okay, so cloud-based model, right? Uh, let's say if you want to give a pricing strategy or subscription-based strategy, like how you subscribe, how do you pay, how do you manage that, which is for let's say an, a complete organization, it's going to be uh, uh, like a field that is already booming. Okay, so finance, so finance, I, I understand not just. Uh, Uh, related to just the balance sheets you have a lot within that corporate finance trade uh, without see uh, like for example everything happens based on what financial decisions our organizations are taking uh, just to tell you uh, of one fact right uh, and it is an open fact uh, you can google it as well the oracle ceo uh, is a lady and uh, safra kars and she she handles finance okay she she doesn't come from it background so you can imagine that how a how a lady which doesn't come from it background is managing uh, one of the world's largest it company is because she is able to understand where the money should go how do we invest where do we invest how much how much should be written on investment for every single product so i think you finance professional you do a wonderful job with respect to return on investment for example if i am a it professional i might try to think okay i want to build the world's best product but if you as a finance professional if you can come up with point saying that okay maybe you are building a good product but the return on investment doesn't beat our margins so that kind of uh, that kind of insights you would need what i would say right if you are coming from finance professional try to develop some understanding into analytics uh business some of the key things that i have mentioned in my uh, presentation was uh, apart from let's say uh, see analytics is not just limited to it okay analytics is everywhere analytics is will help you to take data driven decisions and other thing i would say right uh, be very updated with respect to what kind of uh what kind of applications that you are going to use for a uh, finance industry so a lot of uh, like for example you can use uh, any erp uh you can use any of the erps to manage a uh, finance accounting and other thing i would say that you can uh, as a uh, finance professional is finance happens real time that something is very very important for example uh, i talked to a lot of uh, clients which comes from banking finance stock markets so what they say we don't have the liberty and luxury uh, of a one second as well you can imagine that if you are doing a upi transaction uh, if it goes for more than 10 second you would just not log in into that app anymore and this is just a small transaction but the larger corporations the stock markets it's like not even a second they they operate at nanoseconds so that that's a key thing understand the real time effect of the financial finance world okay diksha i hope that answers your question yes sir thank you so much sir welcome so thank you sandeep sir for your valuable insights and really i like the commitment because as you already told me that you have some emergency work but as you promised me that you will come and present some or share your views on this and you have done this so as i always have any say, question I, i always like to talk to the students yeah yes sir so it's means thank you thank you from the bottom of my heart i'm saying sir thank you very much for sharing this view as you have to shared all the strategies based on global things not only related yes. to india so our student will have insight means how the how they can think on a global level 
even on the nanoseconds as well as from the micro finance as well as the speed of market reduce cost flexibility resilience and innovation so surely sir all students will do best and whenever they require help from your side they will connect with you on linkedin or any sure. type of help that's it i would be happy so to now, i would be happy to connect yes sir thank you sir so now poonam over to you now so oh, thank you sir for uh, sharing your journey and valuable experience and reaching out to us despite of a medical emergency and it is one of the topics which is very less touched upon from a management perspective and we would love to hear from you again and have one more session so and it's always great to hear from someone who's been there and done that and i'm sure that this session would help us in avoiding some of the pitfalls that possibly lie ahead so thank you so much sir and thank you students for your patient listening thank you all thank you sir thank you very much sir thank you then have a good day thank you thank you sir bye bye